Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audi Cycling YouTube channel where today on this second rest day of the Giro d'Italia I'm going to be taking a look at my Vela Games team to see how we are doing. I haven't actually looked at it throughout this week because I am quite scared to see how far my team has fallen considering that I have lost a few more riders this week. But let's go take a look at the team and see how we're actually doing. So we are about 500th in the world which I'm actually pleasantly surprised by. I guess that the riders which I did lose, quite a few other people probably lost as well. And also the GC riders haven't really been that active, like your Roglic's, G's, etc. There's also the loss of Teo as well, sort of helped me not lose that many positions. So I'm quite happy with 500. If I could finish this race with a top 1,000 placing, I'd be honestly really happy with that. But let's go and take a look through the teams, so of course... Almeida, uh, well, Avonapool is out. We already knew that well, from the last video. Almeida's doing okay. In my kind of rule of 100 points per rider credit, he is just about halfway now because he was 16 credits. So if he finishes third, he gets 400. So he needs to gain like another 400 points from stages, which considering there's a pretty hard kind of final week here, I reckon that he can still do that. Boitago has been a little bit disappointing. I really thought he was going to go for the KOM classification early on, but... He just hasn't really been doing much. He's just been helping Caruso. The upside is that Bahrain is leading Team GC. So he will get some points there in the final week. And they are leading it by like 40 minutes. It's something ridiculous like that. So I really hope he gets him a breakaway. Because he's at that really good spot where he's sort of about 6 to 7 minutes down. And I reckon he could he could get in a break and maybe jump up a little bit of time. So I'm, really ha I'm, I'm hopeful for Boitago. Kemner... I doubt he'll reach my kind of benchmark 100 points per rider credit because, you know, he's just kind of sitting in GC, not really doing that much. But I reckon that he'll still pick up somewhere near 600 points. Pedersen, of course, is the, one of the big losses this week. He was, you know, looking set to do quite well in the Chiclamina, so it is a big loss to the team. But he did get over a 1,000 points. Aurelian Padipentola is slowly taking his way up towards 500 points. I'm quite happy with him still. You know, he hasn't done much since his stage win, but he's just been accumulating GC points. And I reckon he'll reach over 600, maybe 650 points by the end of the race. Healy's been looking really good. Of course, he's won a stage already. He finished second in a stage as well. And he looks to be going for the Maile Azula, which is really good for me because that means he'll have to get into breakaways, get some points on some of the mountains get some daily points as well, maybe finish high up on another stage possibly. So quite happy, uh, not just quite happy, really happy with Healy, but you know, a lot of people had Healy, so it's not a massive differential. Jake Stewart is the big disappointment in this team, unfortunately. Everybody else I'm relatively happy with. But yeah, Stewart wasn't a good one, especially when you consider there are so many other great unclassified riders who I could have picked instead. Like I could have gone with a four credit rider, like a Denz or a G or something like that. Put those two credits into Boitago to get Caruso, who's currently sitting in 6th in GC, but will likely move up to 5th once Amaral drops. And then I could have also put, I don't know, Jonathan Milan on instead of Groves, because of course Groves is a DNF as well, which is a real shame because he was looking like one of the best picks of this race. He was one of, I think he might have been the top point scorer by the end of the first rest day, so really disappointing that Groves left the race. I think he was really set to, you know, maybe even contest Amaya Chiclamina, so... Big disappointment there, but now that we've gone through the team, so of course this is kind of the points breakdown. We've lost three riders, so we've still got six to go. We've got Almeida, Boitago, Kemner, Pade Pentler in the GC race, so that's four riders there who are in the, the race of that. Healy's going for mountains classification and breaks, that's pretty good. And Stuart, I just hope, gets another couple of top tens in the last two sprints, to be honest with you. Taking a look at the rider standings. There are some big, big surprises. So, I mean, Milan and Pedersen are still the only riders to get over a 1,000 points, which is kind of crazy. You know, Roglic hasn't hit a 1,000 yet, and there's only, you know, we're going to stage 16 tomorrow, so it's not a lot of stages, really, for Roglic to make up that. And, you know, even if he wins, he's only he might only just scrape the magic rule that I have. You know, everybody else is still not that great. But, like, Derek G, man, a four-credit rider is on 850 points, selected by 0.7% of people. If you are one of those 0.7% of people, congratulations, you you saw something I really didn't, because this guy's doing absolutely insane. I was never really thinking of picking him, so I can't be upset at it, to be honest with you. Tom Scoynes is over 800, that would have been such a good pick as well. 
I was toying with the idea of putting him on and I really wish I would have done instead of Stewart. Perhaps it is better to go for the climbers instead of like the sprinters in the unclassified ride a bit. But then outside of that, yeah, of course, Teo getting the heart, DNF'd as well. Albanese is looking pretty good. Lechnison is, again, he's higher up than, than Aurelian Pellet-Pentler. Rubio has won a stage. Meyerhoff is looking pretty good. Oldani would have been another great one to go with as a six-credit rider instead of instead of Stewart. Nico Dens, of course, won two stages, just over 500 points. Selected by 4% of people, so that's quite a lot. I think a lot of people were quite uh, encouraged by his performance at the Tour of Remedy, where he did good in the prologue. Healy, of course, doing really good. Yeah, Caruso on 450. I reckon he'll get near a 1,000. Um, I could have gone with Dunbar as well. Um, in terms of who's leading the overall race, just to kind of finish up. So they have a pretty strong team. Roglic, Roglic Almeida, Pino, Caruso, Groves, Healy, Lechnison, Aldani, and Pedersen. Yeah, really good team, actually. It's kind of similar to mine in some senses. Um, we've got Groves, Healy, Pedersen, Almeida. They went with Lechnison over like Aurelian Pedipentula. They did better with Aldani than Stewart. And then they went with Pino and Caruso over like a Kemner and a boy Targo or something like that. And then they obviously don't have Avonapool. Um So the team, honestly, I'm relatively happy with it. Top 500 at the moment. Hopefully we finish in the top 1,000. But let me know in the comments down below. How is your team faring? How many riders do you have left? Let's see in the comments down below who has the least number of riders left. I'm interested to see who is going to be kind of really on their knees at this point. But that's it for this video. I'd always like to say to stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Salut!